Karoka is now based on the same MQB chassis as the Ateca and shares an almost identical footprint, measuring 4,382mm long, 1,841mm wide and 1,605mm tall. Those are significant gains over the Yeti and as a result, boot capacity has increased by 105 liters to 521 liters. Dropping the rear bench boosts load capacity to 1,630 liters, too, making the Kroak potentially the most practical crossover in its class. Four engines will be available from launch, 1.0 and 1.5 liter petrols, and 1.6 and 2.0 liter diesels, with power outputs ranging from 115 bhp to 187 bhp. The models in Estonia included the 148bhp 1.5 liter turbo and 148bhp 2.0 liter diesel, which featured four-wheel drive. Even before we got behind the wheel in Estonia, the Karok had been through a meticulous development process to ensure it's ready for mass production. Initial assessments began in the lab with crash test simulations, before hot and cold climate testing with temperatures as extreme as minus 40 and plus 80 degrees Celsius helped eradicate any electrical gremlins. By now, prototypes have covered around 1.2 million miles collectively. And sure enough, aside from a few niggles regarding fit and finish, the Kuroke feels ready for the showroom. We're not able to show you interior pictures yet, but take our word for it. The new 9.2-inch infotainment system is what catches your eye first. It's slick, intuitive to use and loaded with Skoda Connect features such as Wi-Fi hotspot and Apple CarPlay. A smaller 6.5-inch display will be fitted to entry-level models. On the move, the 1.5-liter four-cylinder turbo is extremely quiet, and even a boot of throttle to up the pace does little to upset refinement. There's also a noticeably softer edge to the Kuroks Rife compared with the Atecas, it feels supple and forgiving, but as a result there's more body roll. Adaptive dampers will be made available as an option. As is the case with most models on the MQB chassis, there's little in the way of steering feel, but aligned with the Karak's more relaxed nature it's not a huge concern. The 7-speed DSG gearbox slurs gears smoothly, while the engine is also able to shut down two of its cylinders under light throttle loads to save fuel. For every 62 miles Skoda claims this function helps save around half a liter of petrol. The 2.0 liter diesel feels immediately more potent, thanks to its superior torque advantage of 340 New Mexico. Yet despite this, Skoda claims it's actually slower from 0-62 miles per hour, taking 8.9 seconds, half a second more than the 1.5 petrol. As with the petrol, the diesel motor is well isolated from the cabin and the ride quality on the four-wheel drive version even better. That's because it gets a multi-link setup at the rear, whereas front-wheel drive models make do with a less sophisticated torsion beam. Climb in the back and there's also far more space than you get in the Yeti. Even the tallest of adults won't struggle for headroom, while knee room is pretty generous, too. One thing that has been carried over from the Yeti is the innovative Variaflex seating, the rear bench can slide tumble and even be completely removed for maximum flexibility.